Jumbo, everyone. It's so nice to be back. I am Mija from Jumbo Books, and I am talking to Crystal Grimes, the birth to five facilitator at the uh, Rollins Center at the Atlanta Speech School. Crystal and I have been talking for a couple of weeks now about how to be better readers with and for your kids in order to make your kids better readers. So there is a four part strategy that we've been going through and the acronym is READ. And today we are on the D. So I'm going to turn it over to Crystal to tell us all about what the D in READ stands for. Thank you so much. And I have thoroughly enjoyed myself in this series. So thank you for having me. And so we'll jump right in. As you said, today we are on D of the READ strategy and it's all about do more with the book. This is where you get to make the book come alive. When we do more with the book, we actually encourage children to make connections with the story and their world. So that's so very important. So you, I'll, I'll share my screen actually so we can see more about that. Here we are. And so there it is, D, do more with the book. We'll recap the, the entire read strategy in the end. But again, as we do more, we're able to connect ideas from the book to the child's life. We want to engage in or create activities and events that relate to the book in some way. So it could be crafts, it could be drama, field trips, and even conversations. You can do more by just engaging the child in a topic that is most interesting to them in that storybook read. And we can also use other books to engage the child and do more. So for example, if I am reading one of my favorite childhood stories of the uh, frog and the toad, they were friends. And um, if I wanted to know more about frogs, then I can take a nonfiction book and maybe explore a little bit more about that. So this frog book talks all about the life cycle of the frog. And so we can dive deeper into that topic or whatever, again, as of interest to the child, we can dive more into that conversation. So that's how we do more with the book. It's simple, but you will not believe how powerful it can be to help uh, increase vocabulary and to build reading comprehension. So do more with the book. Wow, thank you so much, Crystal. I love that. And I do want to mention that Frog and Toad's series of books were actually made into a musical that I went to see with my family in Before Times. And parents, you don't have to go see the musical to enjoy it because the music is on Spotify. So I don't know if it's on Apple Music, but I definitely know that you can download and listen to all of the music from the Frog and Toad musical on Spotify. Also, when you're looking for crafts, you know, we love to use Pinterest. We also have a blog post from Minal Patel who wrote Priya Dreams of Marigolds. And that's a book that we have um, sent out to our subscribers. And she created for us a marigold garland making craft. And that is on our blog. And you can look that up as just one of many, many ways of doing more with your books. Now, Crystal, we've gone through a lot of information over the past four weeks, and I was hoping that you could just recap for us, what is the READ strategy? Absolutely, I'm happy to recap. On your screen, you will see it. The R in the READ strategy is repeat the book. Children love repetition, and so the more we read a story, we are exposing them to more vocabulary. They are actually able to get engaged with the story and just take away a little bit more. <laughs> but with E, you want to engage and enjoy. This is where you get to just have fun. You can change your voice tone to match that of the character. You can use gestures and actions and sounds. Use silly voices, just engage with the child. And the more they are engaged, the more that they're able to learn. 
A is all about asking questions. And we don't just want to ask any type of questions. We want to try to incorporate more open-ended questions uh, versus close-ended questions. Close-ended questions aren't bad. They are great ways to um, enter into more of a conversation, but we want to use open-ended questions that just allow more use of vocabulary. So an example of a closed-ended question may be, did you have a good day? And the uh, example of maybe an open-ended question could be, what was good about your day? So that's all about asking those questions, using more why questions, how questions, and just encouraging the child to talk. And then again, today is all about do more with the book, make the book come alive, have fun, use activities, use conversations, use other books, maybe even nonfiction books to explore the topics a little bit further. So read, read, read with your children. That is wonderful. Thank you so much, Crystal. I know that um, the Rollins Center has a lot of information online that is free for parents and educators to access. Can you tell us more about those resources? Absolutely. As you mentioned, we have our Cox Campus uh, platform, which is a professional learning platform that encourages all of the strategies that we've been talking over as well as much more. I am flipping through slides, forgive me. Here is kind of a reference list of some resources. We had a Shine Your Light summer experience last summer, and these were some of the units that we went over that uh, tackles a lot of our topics that we discussed throughout this series. And I wanna zoom in on uh, units four and five, and they're all about the power of story time. We've been focusing on the read strategy connected with reading books with our children. So that is a great resource to check out. And even unit five, which is exploring early literacy. And uh, a couple of blogs that are listed on the uh, Cox Campus platform as well. And the actual read strategy itself, a resource, a one page resource guide is on Cox Campus. And we would love to have you again, check it out. You, it is absolutely free of charge. Uh, if you sign up for an account, of course you have uh, more resources to um, pull from, but you can absolutely uh, check out Cox Campus and you will find all of the resources that we noted and all of the strategies that we've discussed over the last few weeks. Thank you so much, Crystal. This has been so helpful. And you all stay tuned because I was able to grab more of Crystal's time and we're going to be talking some more about great strategies and tips we can use to help our kids be strong, confident readers. Thanks again, Crystal. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Jumbo everyone, this is Mija, founder of Jumbo Books, and I'm really excited to be bringing you a series of interviews with people who are doing great things in the world and who have wonderful experience and knowledge and expertise to share with us. We're calling it the Reflecting Light series because what we're trying to do is just be a mirror to reflect the light these folks are putting out and trying to spread it to more folks so that more of us can see and be illuminated by their light. So first we are speaking with Crystal Grimes. Crystal is the birth to five facilitator at the Rollins Center at the Atlanta Speech School. Crystal is a coach and trainer of other educators to help them to become the best um, educators they can be for our kids. And Crystal, uh, along with the Rollins Center, has come up with a great strategy that we can use as parents to make our kids better and stronger readers. And luckily, Crystal will share it all with us. So, I would like to turn it over to Crystal and first ask you the question that I ask everyone. And that is, how old were you when you first read a book that starred a character who looked like you? 
Wow. Well, first, I want to just say thank you for having me. I'm so excited to join this series. I'm so excited to have conversations with you and share with all of your viewers and the families who have tuned in. So thank you very much. And when I think about my childhood and storytelling, of course, I remember the classic stories like Three Little Pigs, even the Bernstein Bears. I'm, I'm probably aging myself by, by sharing these titles. Uh, Miss Nelson series. I don't remember many storybooks that had characters that looked like me. What I do remember is the oral traditions and stories that my uh, family passed along or shared with me. So having my dad and my mom to read stories maybe from the Bible or just stories that they made up along the way um, that reflected maybe our traditions and our heritage. But you're absolutely right. Like, you know, I can't think of a story that included characters that look like me and, and we've come a long way. And I think that is so important, you know, that characters are reflected, that look, that we can, we can see ourselves um, in the storybook. We've come a long way. I can think of several books um, to include some in your, your series uh, online, Shades of, of Black, things of that nature, many stories like that, that are, are included now that um, to help to tell the story. Um, Absolutely. Um, and before we start, I just want people to get a sense for, you know, where you are in the constellation of literacy. So, you know, I thought the Atlanta Speech School was actually for kids that had speech issues um, who needed speech therapy. So explain to us, what is the Atlanta Speech School? Yeah, and, and so it is. And so it is more than just one school, though. The Atlanta Speech School is actually known as the nation's most comprehensive center for language and literacy. So it includes many schools and programs and clinics. And uh, as you mentioned, the Rollins Center for Language and Literacy, which is the professional development um, center of the Atlanta Speech School. And so, um, yes, so we take the practices in Rollins and they're the same practices that are used in the speech school and we share them with community partners and other schools and even on our Cox campus, which is our professional learning uh, free <laughs> platform where teachers, educators, healthcare workers can all tune in and um, take courses or view resources and um, share in even community platforms or chats to help just dive deeper into the content and into the topics. But again, yes, the Atlanta Speech School is a, a comprehensive program and a comprehensive center that offers uh, many services uh, that are research-based, rooted in the research, focused on the brain science. And it's all about just transformational change for not only children, but also adults to help make sure that we are reaching our highest potential through language and literacy. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, now, before we jump into the strategies, are these strategies for all children or just for children who might be having trouble with reading? Oh, it's, I like to look at it as more of a proactive approach you know, to try to overcome or to um, get ahead of any um, reading language um, concerns and issues. So this strategy can absolutely be used across the board and with, um, with all families. Okay, great, then let's jump into the strategy. Um, yeah. I think I may have mentioned that the strategy is R-E-A-D, it's read. And today we are jumping into the R. So tell us what is the R of the read strategy? I will do that. Can I share my screen with our viewers? Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I just, I don't know about you, but I love a good visual to yes. help to remember what I am talking about, what I am reading about, things of that nature. So again, you've mentioned that we are jumping into the read strategy for families. And so on the screen, it outlines what 
each letter represents. Repeat the book, engage and enjoy, ask open-ended questions and do more with the book. I can't wait until we explore uh, the other letters, but for today, for today only, we'll look at the R, repeat the book. And so that is just what it says. We can read a book multiple times. Just like even for us as adults, you know how you can watch a movie multiple times and you can still get something new out of that movie uh, after the 10th watch of that movie? I didn't recognize that she did that before. Well, that's the same way that it is with books, with children. The more we read books, we encourage them to, number one, have a love for books. They want to just, you know, enjoy the story and read more about what's going on uh, with the characters or what's happening in the, in the story that we are reading. And so it also exposes our children to more vocabulary, which of course helps with reading comprehension. So we want to repeat the book multiple times. And we actually say, try to repeat it at least three to five times more if you need to. We know, again, children love repetition. But it's even a strategy with how we repeat the books. So the first time or the first few times, you really just want to focus in on the events of the story. What's happening in the story? What are the characters doing? We want to use think alouds. We want to really just key in on vocabulary and key events of the story. And maybe when you get to the second read of the story, or like I said, more if you need to, then you want to focus on the emotions of the characters. Why are they feeling that way? He looks sad. I wonder what's happening. So you really want to zoom in again on that key vocabulary associated with those emotions too. Um, but you really want to zoom in on those, on the characters and what they are feeling. And then on the third read, you want to allow the children to become the storytellers. On the first couple of reads, when we pushed in lots of great vocabulary, use those think alouds. I wonder what's happening in the story. I wonder what's happening with that character. As they're hearing the story multiple times, by that third to fifth read, again, depending on how many times you choose, then the child becomes the storyteller. You've pushed in language and now you're able to pull it out a little bit. And so we have um, even another strategy that's connected with that. But before I go to uh, the strategy connected with the R and read and repeating the book, this screen really just tells us again about why it's so important um, to read the stories in an interactive way. Again, the children are more engaged with the story and the text when they're involved with it and reading the book multiple times. The children understand more about the story and the world around them through uh, books. Books are a great way to help to share what's happening in the world with our children. And then sharing stories in a interactive way provides meaningful context for learning about new words. So simply put, the way books are shared with children even from a young age, it matters. It really truly matters. And so let's get to the strategy that I was speaking of um, that is connected with, really with all of, of, of uh, the REACH strategy, but I wanna zoom it in here um, on repeating the book because the more we repeat the book, we can do something as simple as pat vocabulary that will help the children to make connections with the story itself, the pictures, the words that are being used. So when we say pet, the vocabulary, that is actually um, noted on the, the screen, on the side of your screen, you can point to a particular picture in the story that's connected to vocabulary. You can even act out a word in the story or you can tell a child-friendly definition of the word. So in this example on the screen, of course we see the dog who's sniffing the flowers so we can actually point to the flowers because, because maybe that's a word that the child is not familiar with. We can act out smell 
So you can stiff a few times just to help them to make connection, or you can tell that child-friendly definition. So smell and sniff, you know, or to smell or sniff is, you know, the same thing. So again, point, act, or tell. So we want to pat the vocabulary as we are reading the book multiple times. Well, thank you so much for that. That is really, really great. And I will tell you that um, I did try that sort of pat the vocabulary with my nine month old and she 100% thinks I'm crazy. I was like sniffing the book and she looked at me like, <laughs> I made her sniff the book. And I, I think we're going to get there though. I think we're going to get there. It was just, it was a really fun way for me too, to enjoy, you know, a board book, which, you know, isn't always the most, um, you know, scintillating story. So um, I really appreciate you giving us these options. Let me, let me zoom in on that. I can't uh, resist. So much is happening when you engaged your daughter with that storybook read. Some may ask, why would I be silly or repeat the story and keep asking questions if my child cannot talk back with me or if they're not responding in a way? Well, guess what? They can listen. And as we share, they're listening and we're building their uh, receptive vocabulary. And as they build that receptive vocabulary, with the brain is making so many meaningful connections along the way. And then they will then be able to express it later. They'll use their expressive vocabulary and you will hear all of the great vocabulary and words that you pushed in with your daughter. And uh, just the silly faces, again, that gets their attention. That's where they get to have fun. And that's where we're going to explore, engage and enjoy a little bit more in our next session. So you don't want to miss it, uh, but they get to zoom in on what you're doing and what you're saying. And um, that relationship though, though that uh, bond is being formed uh, to not only help with what you all are doing together, but also with making that connection with the book and building that love for reading. So I love that. And thank you for sharing um, that experience with us. Well, wow. Thank you so much. I, I'm glad to hear that it was good and not just um, my child starting to think that her mom is a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, Trust me, her brain was firing off uh, with so many connections just from that simple but powerful interaction that you had. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us. We cannot wait to get to EAD and the rest of the tips and tricks that you have for us. Thank you for sharing your time with us today, Crystal. Absolutely. It was indeed my pleasure and I look forward to the next session. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.